when we talk about start discussing about india's 103 which deals with business combinations there is one such very important amendment or an introduction into india's 103 which has been done recently in 2020 there is a certain adjustment or an amendment which has happened in india's 103 where he introduced the concept of concentration test listen to this word very carefully they have introduced the concept of concentration test in determining whether there is a business which has been acquired or is it just an acquisition of an asset i am only trying to differentiate whether this is an acquisition of an asset or it is an acquisition of a business to determine this they have introduced something called as concentration test what is this concentration test what does it determine a concentration test is optional is only optional if an enterprise wants to adopt a concentration test in determining whether it is a business being taken over or is it only an asset or a group of assets of similar nature being taken over they can apply this concentration test or else they can go on with the definition of business by itself clear so concentration test is a new addition and becomes really important for our discussion perspective let's see what is this concentration test concentration test latest introduction into your india's 103 guys when i talk about this word concentration test it talks about something called as optional it says this is optional if let's say this test results are satisfied if it is satisfied then it should be considered as acquisition of assets it is considered as acquisition of assets if it is not satisfied then i can consider it as business combination under india's 103 subjected to further check of definition of business guys but i am saying this test is optional if it is satisfied then it should not be considered as a business combination it is just an acquisition of assets or group of similar assets or a group of similar assets but if it is not satisfied it can be considered as a business combination this is what is saying as far as concentration test is concerned now what is this concentration test how do i apply this principles of concentration test let us see application of concentration test the application of concentration test should be divided into three parts where i'll do three things to determine whether the concentration concentration test is satisfied or not what are the three things that i have to do number 1 first measure the fair value of the gross assets acquired first i'm saying uh, uh, first assess the uh, first measure what is the fair value of the gross assets acquired mm -hmm. measure fair value of gross assets acquired 
I'll tell you how do I measure this fair value of grosses as required. But for that, let me first complete those three steps. First one is to measure the fair value of gross assets acquired. Number two, identify a single identifiable group or a single identifiable asset. Identify a single identifiable asset or group of similar assets or a group of similar assets then i'll go into part c what is part a first you determine the fair value of gross assets acquired part b identify what is a single identifiable asset or a group of similar assets which are required and finally i'll go into the last one determine if substantially the value that you have determined in part a which is nothing but the gross value uh, as of the fair value of gross assets required is concentrated in the value determined as per part b which is a single identifiable asset or a group of similar identifiable assets clear Assess whether the fair value of group assets determined in A. is concentrated in fair value of asset or group of similar assets determined in part b on assessment of part c if your answer is yes that means the fair value of the group assets acquired is concentrated or substantially the amount of fair value of assets or similar assets or group of assets acquired in part b then you can say that the concentration test is satisfied. If concentration test is satisfied, then it is not a business combination. It is only a concentrate uh, an acquisition of asset or a group of assets. Clear? If your answer to part C is no, that means the fair value of the group assets identified in part A are substantially not concentrated in the fair value of asset or group of assets acquired in part B. Then you can consider it as a business combination as per India is 103. Clear? Any doubt so far that you got? Now, let us look at this. Remember, I said, I will tell you how to assess part A. First, part A. What is part A? Fair value or fair value of gross assets or group assets acquired. What is the gross value or measure of fair value of group assets acquired? How do I identify this value? Or fair value of gross assets acquired. Guys, it is gross assets, guys. While I wrote part C, I wrote it as group assets. How do I measure this? Fair value of gross assets acquired. Again, to measure this fair value of gross assets acquired, I'll take three things into consideration. 
what are the three things which I have to consider? First one, part one. The first part where I will start considering what is the fair value of consideration transferred? First one, fair value of consideration transferred. Guys, to determine fair value of consideration transferred, I should include three things. First one, my purchase consideration at what value I am acquiring it. Number two, fair value of investments already held. in acquiry if i already held some investments in the acquiry and additionally i am acquiring another part of it now fair value of nci in the acquiry a combination of these three things is equal to fair value of consideration transferred that is the first part so fair value of gross assets acquired includes fair value of consideration transferred what is the second part fair value of liabilities assumed fair value of liabilities assumed what do you mean by fair value of liabilities assumed that means these liabilities are also being taken over acquirer is not just taking over asset but also taking over liabilities as well in such cases we will call it as fair value of liabilities assumed part 3 is talking about exclusion what should be excluded? The exclusion is basically for cash and cash equivalents, your deferred tax asset and goodwill. Exclude. Excludes. Three things. First one. Cash and cash equivalents. Second one, deferred tax asset which we have determined as per India's 12 and finally goodwill. These three should be excluded. So how do I calculate fair value of gross assets acquired? I'll calculate like this. Fair value of gross assets acquired is equal to part 1 plus part 2 minus part 3 which is nothing but fair value of consideration transferred plus fair value of liabilities as you minus fair value of sorry minus cash and cash equivalents deferred tax asset and goodwill in these three ways i will identify what is the fair value of gross assets acquired this is your part a in concentration test this part a which i calculated i will identify what is part b what is the single identifiable asset or a group of similar assets a and b once i determine i'll come down to c and i will see if a is substantially equal to b or the value of a that is a fair value of gross assets acquired is concentrated in the fair value of identifiable asset then in such case the concentration test is satisfied let's understand with the help of example Let's say this is my acquiries business. In this acquiry, let's say I have a land and building 
to the extent of 100 along with that there is a cash which is 20 and there also exists a deferred tax asset and there also exists a deferred tax asset to the extent of 10 okay they had an equity share capital of 100 they had an equity share capital of 100 and they had other liabilities liabilities for purchase of that land and building which was to the extent of 30 and there the balance sheet has actually tell at 130 in this particular case let's say the acquirer acquirer is already holding investments in the acquiry to what extent holds 20% investment in acquiry now acquires 50 percent in acquiry now he acquires 50 percent in acquiry at what price did he acquire in acquiry let's say he has acquired 50 percent in acquiry at the rate of rupees 55 okay lastly sufficient right i got off 70 percent so 20 percent plus 50 percent is 70 percent i got holding controlling interest now let's apply this test now let us start with the first part what is the fair value of gross assets acquired part a what is fair value of gross assets acquired let's say the fair value of gross assets acquired include three parts first one part a first one is nothing but the fair value of consideration transferred fair value of consideration how do i determine fair value of consideration again i broke it down into three parts first one is your consideration for 50 percent how much did i pay for 50 percent I paid 55 rupees for 50 percent correct number two second part fair value of investments existing fair value of investment in inquiry already held by acquirer how much did he already holds that is 20% investment which he already held. Fair value, if 50% is 55, what is 20%? 22. Correct? Part 3. Fair value of NCI. What is your fair value of NCI? NCI here is 30%. If 20% is 22, 50% is 55, then NCI is 33, total being 110. This is the fair value of gross assets acquired, correct? Now, that is fair value of consideration transferred. Now, what do I do? Add fair value of liabilities assumed, part B. Fair 
फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ लाइबिलिटी एज्यूम वॉट इज द लाइबिलिटी विच रिलेट टू लैंड एंड बिल्डिंग विच इज बींग एक्वायर्ड नाउ इज थर्टी प्लस थर्टी माइनस पांच सी एक्सक्लूजन रिलेटिंग टू कैश एंड कैश इक्वलेंस एंड ऑल्सो एन एक्सक्लूजन विच रिलेट्स टू डेफर टैक्स एसेट हाउ मच इज कैश एंड कैश इक्वलेंस ट्वेंटी रुपीज डेफर टैक्स एसेट टेन रुपीज सो दैट मीन्स The total amount of fair value of gross assets acquired is exactly one tenth. Is exactly one tenth. Now let's get into the second part. That is part B. What is part B? Fair value of an identifiable asset. or group of similar assets similar identifiable assets here what is the only identifiable asset that you find in the balance sheet look at the balance sheet of acquiry and tell me what is a single identifiable asset or similar assets that you find in acquiry only land and building only land and building so the major identifiable asset which i get is land and building what is the fair value of that land and building i am assuming that my carrying value is equal to fair value and let's say it is 100 i assume that fair value is equal to carrying value fair value is equal to carrying value this is my assumption that's why i took it as 100 Now determine your part C. Now tell me, what is your part C? Is your fair value of consideration or gross assets acquired, which is one ten, substantially or concentrated in fair value of individual assets acquired? Part A is concentrated in Part B, fair value of gross assets acquired is substantially equal to the fair value of identifiable asset or a group of similar identifiable asset. Because if I look at this is hundred by one ten, which is something coming round to ninety point nine percentage or nineteen ninety one percentage. Therefore, it is concentrated. Therefore, your concentration test is satisfied. If the concentration test is satisfied, I will not perform business acquisition. I will not perform your acquisition as per India S one zero three. But instead, I will consider it as assets taken over. I will only consider it as acquisition of the asset. So, in the given example, what did they acquire? They only acquired the land and building. It cannot be considered as business acquisition where you apply India S one zero three. You simply adopt India S sixteen and try to calculate. What is the amount of business? Uh, sorry, what is the value at which the land and building is acquired? So therefore, I will record the entry as land and building account debit to loan account debit, and I will make sure that I am only recording this entry as acquisition of assets, and I will not account it as per India S one zero three. No acquisition of India S one zero three shall apply in this case. Clear? Yeah. 